hope you're enjoying the podcast. I missed last week. I got really busy, got um, evacuated with the fires here in uh, Malibu, California. So I am sorry I didn't have a podcast. I was thinking about you guys a lot, but did not post a podcast. So, but I'm back. K9 Conversations is back. I'm ready to uh, to really delve into a really important topic. And uh, the main thing in the news, dog wise, has been uh, this this here. I'm going to show it to you right here, and that is. The dog that captured uh, or that helped captured al Baghdadi, right? And my topic for the podcast is quite conversely to what you might think. The topic is why you don't want America's hero dog, why this is a terrible pet, and why this is going to be a huge problem for Malinois. Everybody knows I love Malinois. I have one. I've rescued countless Malinois. I've trained countless Malinois. Um, obedience, protection work, uh, whatever. Problem solving, mainly a lot of problem solving. And let's talk about it for a second. So right away, as soon as a dog gets in the news, as soon as a dog does something, and I don't mean just news, I mean in the media. It can be a, a movie. Remember, I complained about John Wick because there are two Malinois in there, and there is also a pit bull in there. And I think people you know, tend to just lend themselves to thinking like, wow, that's in the news. I got to get that. I got to have that. And the problem with that is... Um, people jump in with both feet and don't really know what they're getting into. A dog is a lifetime commitment. It's going to live for 10 to 15 years, some, some longer. And if you're not ready for that commitment, you just think you're getting your jollies because it's really cool. Hey, this is the dog that captured al Baghdadi. This is a military dog. This is really cool. I can buy one. I'm just going to make me cool like a Navy SEAL. It's not, right? You are who you are. And if you're not cool without a Belgian Malinois, you're not going to be cool with a Belgian Malinois. In fact, you'll be a lot less cool. You're going to be a total dork if you get this dog because you're not going to be able to handle it. And then you're going to look like a total idiot, right? So if you get somebody who's really cool and knows how to handle the breed, like me, like my friend Jimmy, Robert, like, like my friend Danny, like a countless friends of mine who have them, who train them, you're just cool. But if you can't handle the breed and you get one, you're a total dork, right? Because you're going to look like... An it, a, a complete idiot because the dog is going to walk all over you. And it happens, it happens all the time. I see it co- constantly from clients. I see it constantly from you know, things I see on the internet. And let's talk about it for a second. So first of all, this dog, whether it's male or female, it's, it's a classified dog. So I, can't, I don't know what it is. And these dogs are, first of all, they're bred specifically to work in military type environments. They're not bred to um, be pets and, you know, and then maybe every once in a while go, you know, fly to Iraq and, and hunt down a bad guy. These dogs live, breathe, and die work. That's it. They, they live and breathe and, and die that, that whole experience. That means from the minute they're born, actually before they're born, they're already being conditioned while they're in the mother's womb, first through sounds and, and through stimulation and stuff like that, because the mother was also used to that type of work. So when I see people profess all these things, that they're also automatically being interviewed on TV because they have a Malinois or because they're some kind of so-called expert. And some of them are. Some of them are giving really good information, but a lot of them are spewing and saying, oh, I want to get one of these dogs because it's such an amazing dog. It is an amazing dog, but a Lamborghini is an amazing vehicle that you don't need to drive to the grocery store. So let's talk about um, a couple things. First of all, the, the, Belgian, the, the Belgian Shepherd, the, which a lot of these dogs, if you look at this dog, it may be a purebred Belgian Malinois. It may not. It may have some other things in it. A lot of times, people who are breeding dogs strictly for working, strictly to go do a job, and they're not going to show it in confirmation or do anything like that with it, they're going to mix some other breeds in there to kind of get some extra drives that they want, extra um, behaviors that they're looking for in a dog. They might want to make the dog bigger or smaller or stronger or higher um, in, in scent detection or higher in their, their defensive drives to make them stronger to go after um, bad guys or whatever that is. But the, the Belgian Malinois was developed in, obviously, in Belgium. And it, it stems back to the late 1800s. So that means these dogs actually predate the German Shepherd, which is really an interesting part because people always mistake Malinois for German Shepherds. They're not. They're nothing, nothing alike, except they, they're both dogs and they're both shepherds. Anyway, um, in, in Belgium and France, they're registered as, you know, a, a Berger Belge, which is, a, you know, Belgian Berger, a Belgian Malinois, a Belgian Berger. Um, and it was named, the Malinois was named after a city 
in Belgium named Malines, which is spelled M-A-L-I-N-E, M-A-L-I-N-E-S, where um, the Malinois actually developed from the Belgian shepherd to be the Malinois. The Belgian Malinois is native of Belgium. It's one of the four varieties of the Belgian sheepdogs. So the other three varieties are the Tavernes, the Grandales, and the Lacanois. So, so those four make up the Belgian shepherds, and here we really classify them separately and in many parts of the world as well. Um, and in some parts of the world, they're still just classified as Belgian shepherds. So they all look quite differently. Some are you know, solid black, some have longer coats. Uh, the Malinois has a shorter coat, and they are really, for the most part, let's, let's strip back out to the Malinois, which was re really kind of honed out of the four varieties to be the strongest temperament, the, the, the most um, workability, and, and they obviously went into the protection dog sports, into narcotics detection, into um, uh, training for um, police work, military work, and they've been used, even since World War I, they were used in this country for those purposes. And that's the really important component to remember is that there is a purpose for this dog. Every dog has a purpose and some dog's purpose, if you didn't see the dog, the movie Dog's Purpose, which I'm yet to see, so don't spoil it for me. Um, every dog kind of has a purpose. So the purpose for Malinois is really the most intense high drive working ability. Some people use them for uh, herding, some people use them for obedience, protection, uh, narcotics detection, bomb detection, and anything like that. The dogs are trained. There's a there's a training base in Texas where most of these military dogs are trained. Everybody knows everybody's talking about. It. I don't need to get into all the details of that. But um, these dogs are really specifically trained for that purpose. Now, what I want to talk to you about is the people who are going to go and try to buy one of these dogs. First of all, these working line breeders, they're never going to sell you that dog because they know that if you don't have the ability to, to manage that dog and work with that dog and train that dog, and if you're calling them, you probably don't, then you're going to end up failing this dog miserably. And any reputable breeder any reputable person dealing with these breeds will not sell this dog to just about anybody so when i got goofy goofy's nine years old i made contact i had rescued countless malinois so i don't even know maybe 10 or more malinois i rescued and i had a sharpe at the time silly that you know from my podcast and i wanted to bring a malinois in the home with him which is very hard because Malinois are not always dog friendly. They're very dominant. They're very high in drive. They're super intense dogs. A lot of times that causes fights with other dogs. So I brought one in, which was a Malinois Akita mix. Not a good mix, by the way. His name Zeus, who I rescued. Um, and I brought him in and he tried to, he attacked my, my, my Sharpe and, you know, he got corrected and I didn't want to deal with that whole thing. So I finished training him and placed him in a, in a one dog only home. But I, I met Tasha, the breeder for, for Goofy, years and years ago. It was years before Goofy was born, and we talked, and she said, why do you want one? And, and I mean, it was a litany of questions. Even though I had been a dog trainer, I still got grilled on this. And a lot of people would say, well, who is she to grill me for, doing, for wanting a dog? I'm not, I don't need to answer to her or him or whoever the breeder is. But in truth is, the person is doing, the breeder is doing the best thing for you and for the dog. So... A good breeder is not going to just sell you a dog, right? So, so if you really want a good dog, you have to deal with a good breeder. And that person is not going to sell their dogs on Craigslist. We'll get into Craigslist in a minute. They're not going to um, sell to a, a puppy store. They're not going to be puppy mill breeders. They're going to be people who consciously or, and conscientiously breed their dogs. So that means they're working their dogs, they're titling their dogs, they're health checking their dogs, they're going through all these specific, specific things. And then they have people on a waiting list before the dog is ever born. So when I was wanted a, a puppy from Tasha, I met her mom, not Tasha's mom, but, but Goofy's mom, and she wasn't even pregnant yet. She had one litter on the ground that she had just, just um, placed, and now this, she was thinking about planting another litter. So she said, well, if you're interested in my dog, come down to, to the show, which was the local show, the Yukonuba show here in Long Beach. And I went down and she said, I want you to meet my dog. I want to talk to you. I want to meet you. I jumped through so many hoops and I was so happy to do it because I knew this person was a really conscientious breeder and somebody who cared about the breed and, and really cared. So it was a year after, I think it was maybe six, six, six months to a year after that initial contact that I finally got my puppy, Goofy. And Goofy was 
a ton of work. I had to sign a three-page contract, you know, about the dog. And all this stuff I'm telling you is because I like the way Tasha, the breeder, did this, right? I'm not going to refer her out as a breeder if you guys want Malinois because um, she's got homes for every dog she's ever bred and dogs she hasn't even bred yet because they're, they come from the, these good alliance. And there's, a, there's other good breeders. I, I just know Tasha as breeding Malinois. I know my friend Danny who breeds Malinois breeds really good dogs. But I can speak from experience because I took one of Tasha's dogs home and I, I know what she did. So um, the important part, what I'm trying to make to you is that it's a really tough decision to get this Malinois. And the breeder hopefully will make you make that decision with them and kind of evaluate if this is the right breed for you. But remember, you know, your ego is going to get in the way. You're going to go, I can handle the dog. I've had dogs before or I've read books or I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And you're not right. You're just not. I'm sorry. Look at some of the vi videos on my YouTube channel that talk about people who have failed with their Malinois. Epic failures. Epic, epic, epic failures. So these are people who got a dog probably off Craigslist. And I'm going to talk about that. I'm not slamming Craigslist as an organization. I'm slamming the fact that they're allowing people to advertise on their platform and just ad hoc sell dogs, right? Just anybody who wants one. I remember when I was doing IPO with, with Goofy, some guy said, well, I was talking to this breeder and they started asking me all these questions about the dog. Well, screw them. I'm not going to show them my driver's license or give them my address. Well, hey, if you want one of my dogs, you're going to have to give a lot more than a driver's license or, you know, or answer a couple of questions because I, I would never in my life give a dog to somebody who had that kind of a, a reluctance to giving me information about them. I want to know where the dog is going to be. I want to know what the dog is going to be doing. And this is because I've, I've got the best interest of the dog at, at, at hand. Right? It's not just a dog. It's not just like, oh, okay, you know, I made three widgets. You can have two of them for a dollar. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely preposterous. But on Craigslist, this happens. And if you're getting a dog off Craigslist, you're getting a really crappy dog. And I'll give you a great example. I had a client um, who had a dog who, who was a Malinois. It was a really nice dog, but had a lot of behavioral issues, was biting people left and right. Everybody was getting bit by this dog. And I went in and trained the dog, and the guy was completely irresponsible. Complete, the owner of this dog was completely irresponsible, and he had this dog that was giving him all these problems, giving the household all these problems, and I went in and trained it with somebody else who was very responsible. But the actual owner of the dog wasn't. So when I finally found out where the dog came from, it was from Craigslist. No kidding, right? What, what kind of a moron gets a dog off Craigslist? Because that's just idiotic. It's an impulse buy. It's the same kind of a dumb idiot who gets a dog at a pet store, right? It's just something you don't do. It's just, it's not thought out. Not thinking out getting a dog is idiotic. And when you see a dog on the internet or on the news or on the whatever, and you say, oh, that this dog got al-Baghdadi, al al-Baghdadi or whatever his name is. First of all, the dog didn't get al-Baghdadi. Let's get, let's get this straight. The dog was trained by a trainer, handled by a handler, and taught what he needed to do. And then he found and picked up the scent and got al Baghdadi. So now we see a picture on the news. Super handsome dog, right? Really nice dog. But get a, get a picture of it and put it in your house before you get the dog. So the Malinois have a lot of issues. I'm just going to stick to Malinois. I'm not going to go into all the other working dogs because they're very similar. But I'm going to stick to Malinois. I've had one for close to 10 years. I've been familiar with the breed for a lot longer than that. I've trained them. I've titled them. I've solved problems with them. I've rescued them. I am the guy who you want to listen to about this. And I'm just telling you, they're cool dogs. Watch videos. Watch videos of them. Check them out. Go to demos. Go to uh, trials and check them out. But don't get one. Because this dog must be trained constantly. Since the, from the day you bring this dog home, you're going to be training this dog. Every, and every day there is something. I've gotten goofier on cats and dogs and people and kids and little dogs and, and big dogs and birds and other, I mean, everything because I was this fastidious on the training. And if you're not, it's not going to happen. The dog will be, Malinois are very often dog aggressive because they have this intense personality, this intense degree of prey drive that makes them uh, very reactive and very aggressive towards other dogs. So it takes a super, and I mean, I, I'm saying super, not to be lighthearted, but super intense amount of training, as well as knowledge of training to train this dog. So you can say, I've got all the time in the world. I'm going to dedicate two hours to training this dog every single day. But that's not enough because you have to have the knowledge of how to train this dog because this dog is so intense that you're not going to know how to train it. And if I'm talking you out of this dog, 
good because that's really what I'm trying to do because every time something comes out like this, this hero dog thing, you know, we, we got Osama bin Laden and there was a Malinois involved in that and we watched John Wick and there's two Malinois involved in that and we see this al-Baghdadi thing and there's a Malinois involved in that and we watch Max, the movie, and there's a Malinois involved in that. Every time we see this, the demand for these dogs spikes, which means greedy bastards who just go out and want to make money will breed the dogs and just sell the puppies and then disappear. And you're going to be stuck with these dogs who are then going to end up in a shelter or in a rescue and that that really sucks. So I'm the advocate for the dog here. I don't care about what people think about me, who's going to go, oh, you know, I'm a responsible breeder and I sell off Craigslist, which ain't, right? You're, you're just not. If you're selling your dogs off Craigslist, you're not asking for a questionnaire. If you're not willing to take any dog you sell back after any period of time, you're not a responsible breeder, right? You're just doing it to make money. It's bull. It's complete bull crap because the good breeders I know will take their dogs back if something goes wrong. Now, besides being super intense and super difficult to train and you take a super amount of knowledge to train the dogs, the dogs can be aggressive and destructive by no fault of their own, right? Because this intense drive, this intense prey drive that they have, that makes them great military dogs and working dogs and protection dogs and sporting dogs is also what completely destroys them in a typical home environment. You live in an apartment, the dog can't get out, the dog can't run, the dog can't think, can't process, can't engage, and can't do things to utilize this energy well, the dog's just going to be destructive. And that destructiveness can be self-destructive, can be self-mutilating, pull their fur out, chewing their tails, chewing their paws or their feet. But it can also be eating your couch, eating your floors, eating through a wall, biting the neighbors, jumping a fence, which a Malinois has no problem jumping a seven-foot fence. So if you don't have a seven-foot fence, you're not going to have a Malinois. And uh, getting in the neighbor's yard, maybe killing the neighbor's cat, attacking the kids and stuff like that. Because that's the other thing I'm going to talk about um, is, is this prey drive, this unchecked prey drive, which is so powerful, right? So powerful that this dog can work through immense, immense things in their, in their drives. They can go through, you know, hours and hours of searching for somebody or doing or working or protecting or biting and doing all these things. But it's also what makes the dog a huge problem. You watch some really good trainers train these dogs. You watch somebody like my friend Danny or, or my friend Jimmy, uh, my friend Robert, who trains Malinois, who knows the breed. You'll see us like poetry in motion. But you see these other people who get these dogs who don't know how to correct them, don't know how to communicate with them, and it's a disaster. It's a complete, complete disaster. So, um, like I said, they're not always pet friendly. I got a couple notes on him. I'm trying to, I try to remind myself of what we keep on topic. And that's a problem because the prey drive instigates other dogs. Cats, mm, not so good. What makes them great for military work and competing is what makes them a nightmare for the casual dog owner. And if you watch, oh, I saw this picture on, on uh, CNN or Fox News or MSNBC or whatever you watch. And I, he's so handsome. He's such an epic dog. He's so stoic. I love the look of the dog. That's great. Then get a picture of the dog. And you, they should be selling posters of Malinois everywhere. I think they should. I think they should sell stuffed Malinois everywhere because that's what people want. People really want the stuffed version of the dog that's actually doing the work because you can't handle the dog that's going to do the work. And you're not going to prove me wrong on that. Sorry. I've seen it way too many times. Malinois, although they're a really intelligent breed, is usually not a great breed unless they've been conditioned to kids. Right? Just to take a Malinois around kids is a nightmare because they're going to be highly hyperactive they're going to be very prey driven which means they're going to try to chase the kids they're going to be nipping at the kids the kids if they're not uh, very familiar around dogs then you've got the kids afraid of the dog which are they're going to act very suspicious and strange and the dog's going to chase them now that might not be a problem for you if you say well i don't have any kids not a big deal but you know what there's other kids living in the world and they're going to go after those kids i constantly get emails about malinois going after bicycles cars children, skateboards, shopping carts, anything like that, because that's just in their prey drive. And the, the more the news talks about them, the, the more unknowing people are going to end up trying to get them. And that's where the problem comes in. I've rescued so many mouths in shelters because people got them and then they had no clue what to do with them. And it's not a dog you can just give to your neighbor or your daughter or your son or your dad or whatever because they take an immense amount of work. And when they go into the shelters, they don't do well in shelters because they break down. It's that isolation confinement that breaks them down. So they get into the shelter and they just completely break apart. So I don't know how many rest I've rescued countless dozens. And I know that they are huge issues with you know, with, with people because they, it takes a certain personality for a person to get along with a dog. 
Here comes Goofy getting in my lap. Come on, Goofy. Hop up here. You can talk to the people. Come on. Here's Goofy. Here, Goofy, look over here. Now, okay, well, see, Goofy's just going to give me kisses. That's what he's going to do. And Goofy is a horrible example of the Malmola because he's so well trained. And the amount of training that's still, Goofy's nine years old. Okay, Goofy, hop down. All right, you got to get down. <laughs> okay. Good. Lie down. Go lie down. Go lie down. Um, nine years old, right? And I'm still training him at least an hour or so a day. And that means when I first got him, I was training him many hours a day. And I would, you know, dedicate six hours, eight hours on certain days and nights to go out to IPO training, Schutzen training, uh, Mondial ring training, and all these things. I'm just going to adjust my mic here. So th these are all things that I dealt with with a Malama. So I, I totally know what's going on and what you need to have one of these. And I would just please ask you, please, please don't get one, right? And if you know anybody who wants to get one, tell them not to get one. Get a picture, you know, go watch, go watch a movie on them. Go watch John Wick and, 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 and live in the fantasy, right? Live in the fantasy. Like if you see a movie about airplanes, you don't need to go buy an airplane, right? You can go look at airplanes. If you see a movie about, you know, shark diving, do you really want to go shark diving? Is that really what you want to do? And I think there are people who want to do that. And that's really, really sad. So if you love the Malinois, if you really have this, this heroic, all-American personality of, of wanting to be a part of this, make a donation to a Malinois rescue. Make a donation to your local shelter that rescues dogs. And you know, and keep it at that because that's going to be the, your very, very best Malinois experience. The best Malinois experience you're going to have as an un- knowledgeable dog trainer, handler, whatever, is going to be not getting one. So mark my words on it. Let me just give you a couple of questions that I've gotten from people pertaining directly to Malinois. So um, I've got this question from Orgis. It says, hello, Robert. We have two puppies, seven-month Pomeranian. Two cats and my husband want to adopt a Malinois puppy, one and a half months. All the pets that we have are in apartment. My question is, is there any danger that the Malinois attack the pet when he grows up? Yes. Yes, there's, a, there's an exact danger of that because if you, first of all, if you live in an apartment, this Malinois is going to chase these other animals around your apartment until he catches them. And then he's going to try to play and he's going to bite. And you're an, an unknowing dog owner, for, you know, Malinois owner, sorry, not a dog owner, you've got other puppies, and I think you're probably doing great with your little Pomeranians and everything. I think it's fantastic. Do not get a Malinois. There is an immense danger of the dog attacking because, you know, with Goofy, Goofy's great. Goofy knows the boss man and, and Dwayne and Jimmy and everything. But it, it, there is an immense amount of structure. I trained him to be okay with that. Natalie says, thank you for your training advice. I've asked this before, but my 22-month-old Malinois, I rescued her almost a year ago, is amazing. However, she, in the last three months, roughly, she has started barking as soon as I pull out of the driveway at everything. She used to only bark at bicycles and motorcycles while in the car, but now she looks like she's looking for things to bark at. I know yelling is counterproductive. Yes, it is. And ye, she's very focused and determined, so trying to get her attention doesn't work well while on the car or in the car. Any help would be appreciated. So this is, <coughs> this is typical for Malinois because this is the prey drive. This is what they're looking to do. They're looking to go find the bad guy. They're looking to go find the drugs. They're looking to go find the explosives. And that insane drive, that insane, intense focus is, Goofy, come over here. Come on. Goofy plots. That insane focus is what makes them great for that, and it's what makes them horrible for you as a pet owner because they, they won't stop, right? Once they get on that and this is what's important when people train them, they know, good trainers know that how to get them to check out, re-engage and focus, re-engage to the handler, and then go back to work. And if you don't know that, you're not going to get them to do it. And if there's no magic formula, there's no, you know, DVD or how to train a Malinois.com. Hope nobody ever opens that, by the way. I should go buy that domain just to prevent that from happening. But um, you're not going to get the dog to change. Another question, just for fun, says... How do I get my seven and a half month old Malinois to stop nipping at my wife and biting, pulling on the leash? Feel like he only does it with her. The reason he only does it with her is because he doesn't respect her. And that's not a, that's no slam on your wife. That's a slam on your training because the dog more than likely wasn't conditioned to be passed from handler to handler or person to person. And that's what happens when these Malinois are trained. I've seen it before. The dogs get the training, then they're passed to a handler. That handler must engage the dog exactly like it was handled in training. And it requires training to be able to handle the dog even once it was trained. So imagine how hard that is on there. So 
he's not going to respect your wife unless she takes an active hand in the training and unless she understands how to engage a Malinois. Malinois train differently than, let's say, German Shepherds, Rottweilers, Border Collies, because you have to have a certain degree of dominance and strength over them. But if it's too much, you crush the dog or, or spook the dog into becoming really neurotic, and then you've got a really big nightmare in your hands. And the last question for the day is from Jane, who says, how do I... How to recognize aggression towards people or if dog is just nervous. I have a Malinois, six month old. And also when someone come to my house, my dog barking looks very aggressive and doesn't listen to any commands. Prey drive. Typical issue with a dog. The dog is probably suspicious, probably wasn't socialized well around other people and is showing these behaviors. Could be an engagement to play, but, it, but misread and then mistrained by some cookie trainer. And I don't mean just, I'm sorry, I don't mean it like a negative to cookie trainers, but a trainer who has no knowledge on working line dogs and then engaging this and trying to correct it either through coercion, uh, through dominance, or through luring and shaping, through bribing with cookies is going to have a disaster on their hands. So th this is a big problem. I want to keep this podcast short because I want everybody to listen to it. I don't want you to get a Malinois. I don't want you to get America's hero dog. I don't want you to get the dog that killed or, or found whatever, Baghdadi, Bin Laden or whatever. Stay away from it. Right. Watch the news. Enjoy it. Make a donation to to these rescues, to these uh, organizations that do great work for for military dogs. Go, go find an organization that that rescues military dogs and gives them a home and, and, and just write them a check and tell them to send you a picture of the dog that you donated for. And you'll have that picture forever and put it in your wallet and show everybody this is my dog. So good breeders will not sell you a dog unknowingly. Good breeders will never put their dogs on Craigslist. Good breeders will never put their dogs in a pet store. So if you're seeing dogs in that situation, they're not good dogs. They might be nice and sweet and whatever, but they were bred unlovingly. They were bred in a horrible type situation that will not lead to anything positive for the breed. And please don't be selfish and go, well, this one's a good one. You're, you're harming other dogs, the dogs that are used for the breeders. You, you're harming um, the, the breed because they're going out unneutered and, and all these other things. So that's it. Don't get a Malinois. That's the topic for this podcast. I hope you enjoy it. Please check out my website, robertcabral.com, all my other videos on social media. Please follow me on Instagram as well, on all the social media, whatever it is, you know, YouTube, Facebook. I'm there. I'm everywhere. I'm literally everywhere, believe it or not. So thanks for tuning in. Thank you for loving dogs. And thanks for making um, making my job of loving dogs a, um, a, a real, a dream, a dream to me. Thank you for that. So see you next week. Take care. Canine Conversations. That's it. See you later.